It's Friday, November 5th. My name is Jordan, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. Okay, let's start things off with some actual Linux news. Kernel 2.6.37's release, Candidate 1, has been finalized. Some of the major new features of this are some graphics improvements, some additions of the Broadcom wireless in drivers that we discussed before, and the ability to build the kernel without the big kernel lock. Now, if you're not familiar with a big kernel lock like I wasn't, it's actually a mechanism that was designed right at the beginning of multiprocessors, when systems started to get multiple processors in them many, many years ago. Not really as necessary anymore. And from what I've read, it's something they've been trying to phase out for several years now, so it's great that they're actually getting closer to that end date for it. But honestly, the biggest news that I see with it is those Broadcom open source drivers are finally going to be included in the default kernel, and the Intel Poolsbow open source driver is going to be included as well. Moving right along, let's talk about Ubuntu a little bit indirectly, sort of. According to internetnews.com, Red Hat is not concerned about Ubuntu's move toward the Unity project. Red Hat's Fedora project leader, Jared Smith, basically put it this way, different distributions do things different ways, it's all about choice, and I do have to agree with him there. Basically, if you don't like the way that Ubuntu is doing things with Unity, you can always go back to GNOME 2.x, or you can move to another distribution that might be embracing GNOME 3.0 and GNOME Shell. He says it may also encourage more people to step up and participate and help in the development process. And since we're talking about Ubuntu and Unity and big changes that are on the horizon, Mark Shuttleworth announced that Ubuntu is going to be moving away from Xorg server. There are a lot of other display management systems out there other than Xorg, and Wayland, an OpenGL-based one, is the one they've decided to go with. According to the developers of Wayland, every frame is perfect. And by that I assume that they mean that everything that you see should be perfect with no screen tearing, no lag, no problems rendering the stuff that's on the screen. And Wayland does tie into some existing technology such as direct rendering and kernel mode setting. Now when Ubuntu is moving toward this, it's not going to be a very quick process. It will not be in place by 11.04 most likely. Shuttleworth says he would love to see that happen and he would love to have those high hopes, but it really just isn't going to happen. He's looking at about a four year time span. Honestly, I would be willing to bet that Ubuntu is going to have something done by 11.10, and they will probably have it as the default by 12.04, but don't quote me on that. For those wondering why they're going to be switching, they want to have a better overall experience, a smoother experience, and everything just working out of the box as smoothly and as fast as possible. They even considered some other environments like Android's compositing environment and some proprietary solutions, but as far as taking the whole free software stack over, it just wouldn't have worked out. All right, let's keep this train a-rollin'. Stormy Peters, the executive director of the GNOME Foundation, has announced that she's leaving the GNOME Foundation as a paid contributor to go work for Mozilla. She's going to be heading up the developer engagement program and working on the open web, which basically says if you're putting something out on the cloud that you should be able to protect your data, maybe even pull your data down locally. Now she mentions though, while she's leaving her paid position at the GNOME Foundation, she will not be leaving her role as a GNOME contributor. Which just goes back to the whole idea of community and Linux, and we are all working together toward the same goal. And since we were talking a little bit about the web, Google has released Chrome version 9 to developers. Now, as I mentioned several times before, Google is actually rolling out new versions every so many weeks, every so many months. Chrome 8 just came out a couple of weeks back as far as the developer channel. Chrome 8 is actually going to be released to the public within the next couple of weeks. And as I've just read, it turns out that Chrome 9 is intended to be out by the end of November. And since we're talking about things releasing, there was a big release this week. Fedora 14 is final as of November 2nd. Now there's not a whole lot to this as far as desktop users are concerned. There's a new feature called libjpeg turbo that makes loading and saving JPEG images a lot faster. There's also a new backend called Spice that's supposed to help out with virtualization, but it's not really fully implemented yet. They're aiming for Fedora 15 with that. However, the majority of new features seem to be geared more toward developers and system administrators. They've upgraded the version of Python to 2.7. They've included a compiler for the D programming language. They've added the ability to do GNU step development and various and sundry other things you may or may not be interested in. Of course, information about that can be found in the source code below. And since we talked about Google just a little bit earlier, let's go back to it and talk about Android. Google has updated their earlier figures, and they now say that 77% of devices running Android are running version 2.1 or newer, and about 36% of those are running version 2.2. 
this is actually pretty decent. However, when you compare it to things like the iPhone OS, maybe not. Thing is, there are still about 27% of those devices that are still running version 1.5 or 1.6 and just may never be upgraded. And even though Google's not giving out really much information on Honeycomb version 3.0 of Android, an unofficial source at LG has confirmed that Android 3.0 is going to be designed and geared toward tablets, and there's an LG Android tablet in the works. It is expected to be an 8.9 inch screen with an Nvidia Tegra 2 dual core chip in it. Now as far as when that's coming, again, it's still very early, it's still sort of in the rumor mill phase, but I just thought I would throw that in there at the end. Well that's all I've got for you today, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.